I bought this tackle bag at a yard sale for four dollars. At the bottom of the bag I found this case pocket knife. The knife is made of brass with some kind of composite material for the scales. The blade is stainless steel. The blade locking feature appears to be in working order. I noticed that the point of the blade protrudes when the knife is closed. The blade measures about three and a quarter inches fully open. I'm not sure if the blade has been shortened. The point has some gouges, but it looks pretty symmetrical. I just can't see Case letting the knife leave the factory with the point protruding like that. I use some steel wool and a popsicle stick to clean inside the knife where the blade rests. Here's the inside all cleaned up. I didn't find anything at the bottom of the channel that would keep the blade from fully closing. This little hump is what controls how far the blade closes. I carefully file down the hump little by little. After filing, the point was safely enclosed in the body. The little hump still protrudes enough so that the edge of the blade will not bottom out. I use some wet and dry sandpaper along with WD-40 to take out the worst of the gouges on the blade tip. This is a collectible knife, so I didn't want to sand away the factory grind. I was just looking to address the worst of the scratches. I went over the outside of the body with 400 grit wet and dry. I was hoping I could sand away the chalky residue on the scales the same way I've been able to do on plastic screwdriver handles. Here's the knife after sanding down to 1200 grit. I decided that the dents and gouges on the brass were too deep to try to sand out. I used my Lansky kit to sharpen the blade. This sharpening system works good on blades this size and larger. For smaller knives, I use my trihone. I had to spend quite a bit of time with the coarse stone to get the edge back in shape. I work through all of the stones down to ultra fine. I usually check the edge with my thumbnail. If the blade sticks on my nail, then it is sharp enough. I decided to go ahead and shave some arm hair just to gross everybody out. I like to use rem oil to lube the knife pivot. I like the rem oil because it is very light and low odor. I gave the brass and the black scales a couple coats of paste wax to slow down oxidation. W.R. Case & Sons dates back to 1889 when the four Case brothers, with their father's help, began selling knives from a wagon in New York. Today, Case is owned by Zippo, makers of the famous windproof lighter. Case knives are very collectible. One of the big reasons is the dating system Case built into its tang stamps. On this knife, the tang stamp indicates it was made in 1981. Notice the five dots on the left of the Nazi looking SS and the four dots on the right. I was also able to translate the part number stamped on the blade. The knife is a hammerhead pattern, single stainless steel blade with black plastic handles. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I thought I'd share some of the pocket knives in my collection. I like the dime store novelty knives that were marketed to youngsters. 
This one is a Dick Tracy and Bow Plenty knife. A lot of these novelty knives were made by a Camco. In addition to the blade, it's got a whistle and a magnifying glass. And it glows in the dark. How cool is that? This one is Davy Crockett's own Frontier knife. It also happens to be a Barlow style, which is my favorite. This is a Lone Ranger Hyo Silver knife. Check out the silver bullet built into the handle. It has a standard blade and a combination screwdriver bottle opener blade. So you can pop open a sarsaparilla after a hard dry day on the trail rounding up bandits. And this one is a deputy sheriff pocket knife with a belt chain. My favorite novelty knife in my collection is this Camco spook knife. And it also glows in the dark. That is spooky.